seven. Speech number seven. So here's his objective in research your topic. It's to collect information and your topic from numerous sources. Carefully support your points and opinions with specific facts, examples, and illustrations gathered through that research. Michael Rudd's speech is pay to play. Pay to play, Michael Rudd. schemer Nevin Shapiro and if you haven't heard he was a booster for the University of Miami Florida and he just came out and said that he has paid over 75 high school athletes to come to Miami and while they were there between 2002 and 2010 with some of the things that I just named. Miami may face the death penalty in college football as a result of this which is what it sounds like your college football program is officially terminated. <clears throat> Unfortunately, this is not a random occurrence in major Division I sports today. If you look over my shoulder, you'll recognize a lot of these logos of some of the biggest names in college football. Our hometown team is up there, along with both teams that played in the national championship last year. Heisman Trophy candidates, NFL draft picks. What those teams actually have in common, though, beyond all of that, is they have all been investigated by the NCAA in the last 12 months for booster interference, paying players, illegal benefits, whatever you want to call it. It's been an ongoing topic for years. Do we pay these players? Is the education enough? It's reaching such a threshold that the NCAA has actually come out and said, maybe we should start paying these players. So, pay to play. What is it? I say no, we don't pay the players. And I'm going to tell you why later on. But first, I want to give you some information from both sides of the ball to state reasons why we should keep the way it is, and perhaps we should start paying them. Academic advisor Flint Harris said, through tuition checks, room and board, grants that you can get into and receive, student athletes on top of their scholarship can actually receive $17,000 a year in checks from the school on top of what they're already getting in a free education. Sports Digest said in a different article, that the value of a four-year athletic scholarship at a major Division I program is over $200,000 in value. So, if these kids are making up to $17,000, potentially if they're looking through the right system and asking for the right grants and the right checks, and are receiving something that is in value of excess of $200,000, we shouldn't pay them anything on top of that, I don't think. I don't think that's too much to ask. Except if you look at it the other way. In a different article published in Sports Digest, it came out that last year, the 2010 college football season, the major Division I college football programs made hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue off of the football program through ticket sales, apparel, which puts those guys' numbers that they're playing on the back and sells it out to our communities. In even more detail, Ohio State and a few other programs made as much as $50 million in profit. Profit. Think about that for a second. $50 million in profit, one football season. Can they not afford to give our 80 guys $30,000, $40,000 a year, just a 
small little piece of that pie. The most first prime example of this really happening was the Fab Five, who was the big recruiting class that came into the University of Michigan in the early 90s. And there was a recent documentary by ESPN that highlighted how much money they made for the university off of apparel sales that was non-existent before they came. And that was because they wore black socks that are a little bit cooler than mine <laughs> and baggy shorts. And they made that program so much money. But the second Chris Weber took a $50,000 loan from a booster three months before he was going to pay be the number one pick in the NBA draft, which he was going to pay that money back, too. It's not like it was a present. And he was going to be drafted. The NCAA stepped in. Michigan stepped in. They wiped them out. Weber camp set foot on Michigan's campus for 10 years. He went to trial for perjury and was put on probation. Jalen Rose and the other guys have the banners that the final four games they went to taken down. Their records have big asterisks next to them in the almanac. But you know what wasn't taken away? Was the hundreds of millions of dollars that the University of Michigan made off of those guys and still do to this day. So, where do you go? We could sit here, I could give you more examples all day long, and you could have sides for or against it. But ESPN analyst Colin Cowherd said, money doesn't solve people's problems, but we think it does. If we give student athletes $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 a year, what's to say that they're not going to still take that $30,000, $40,000 car from a booster? I mean, why would you still not accept it? You just want more. It's a natural progression in this country and the way we act. So my solution, and this was taken from Colin Cowher, and I agree with him, while extremely over the top is if you, as a booster, try to interfere and give improper benefits to a student athlete and convicted, you receive 10 years in jail. It's a grade A felony. That's it. You should have known the rules. You shouldn't have broken them. Until that happens, though, such an extreme over-the-top rule as that, we could sit here and talk all day because the debate will still rage on about whether or not to pay student athletes. Thank you very much. All right.